Is someone praying? Father, thank you. Parus kalabra haske de balako jade ba subre etiash. Mento salaja nasko bra akata balando zade ba hashade bratis. Lift your voice, make sure you are praying, let it be from the depth of your heart. Shikapaus kalabrade bede balato shetebas. Embretos ketebalusha da bratus kalibrata. Parada barotos sodo brade gede gede balada bosh. Thank you, Jesus. For January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, now December, thank you. You have done all things well. Are there grateful people in this place? Jesus, we bless you. For your mercy, for your grace, for your goodness. Thank you. Shela baratusa de balakatusia. Hallelujah. Father, we are gathered tonight to say thank you. We are gathered tonight to declare that we love you. We are gathered tonight to enthrone Jesus. For the things you have done. For the battles you have won. Only you are worthy of our praise. We magnify your name. For the things you have done. For the battles you have won, only you are worthy of our praise. We magnify your name. One more time, everyone. For the things you have done. Jesus, we declare that you are greatly to be praised. We do not take for granted your mercy, your grace. We do not take for granted the testimonies, the transformation, salvation, revival. We do not take for granted your walkings in and through our lives this year. And Father, we have come as people deeply grateful. We honor you. We recognize your grace and your mercy and your majesty. Let the name of the Lord be glorified. From the rising of the sun even to the going down of the same. We declare let the nations praise you. And we join the people so God to praise you and to declare that forever you are God. You have done all things well and to Jesus be all the praise. Amen and amen. Please walk to two or three people, celebrate them from the depth of your heart, tell them something nice. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Mm. Are they grateful people? Celebrate Jesus.
Celebrate Jesus and please be seated. Hallelujah. Amen. Um, Psalm 50 verse 5, the last function before we get to the word tonight. The Bible says, gather unto me my saints, they that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. Now, it's a culture in this ministry that um, at the closing of the meeting, we provide an opportunity and we challenge people um, to sow with understanding into the ministry. Uh, there's always an end of year sacrifice, not necessarily today, all through within the time of the break, as God would lay it in the hands of people. We believe in giving, but we believe in giving that is done from a standpoint of love, non-manipulative giving. And um, the Bible allows believers to be part of kingdom advance. And so this is, is very, very important. Um, so we'll give this opportunity again, um, not necessarily today, but all through within the time of the break into January. It's a culture as a ministry. We call on all who have been blessed and um, lifted and changed, transformed through this ministry to be part of this as God grants them the grace. Um, all sacrifices and all seeds um, will be collected in our central account. There's no proxy. There's no giving to people. I'm saying this in advance because usually when announcements are made like this, you will have all these funny people begin to arise. Um, the accounts should be displayed and will be displayed. And you can have it down. And as God grants you the grace, you can sit as a family, as individuals, and trust God to just minister to you what you will give now this is very important please listen very carefully um the end of year sacrifice seeks to do three things number one it is it is your expression of thanksgiving it's a sacrifice of thanksgiving in recognition um of all the things that god has done in our lives god has been merciful many of us have received all kinds of breakthroughs and so we come with that seed of sacrifice. Number two, um, it is part of your commitment towards kingdom advance. I believe that believers have a responsibility to stand to see that the purposes of God be advanced. There is no magic about what happens to the resources that believers give. It adds to the overall resources that are used for kingdom Advance. And so it's always an opportunity for believers to sow knowing that for every soul that is saved, life transformed, and every contribution towards kingdom advance, it is recognized in heaven. Number three, it is a prophetic connection um, as a way of communicating your expectations to God. I believe that with all my heart. When you connect with understanding, you release your faith believe in God for that which you would do. Uh, let me tell you something. I have discovered that believers are not greedy, globally speaking. I used to think believers are greedy, but I don't believe that anymore. The problem usually is the integrity with the management of the resources of the kingdom. When people sow seeds, when they commit resources, and you know people divert seeds that are meant for kingdom activities into personal um you know personal gains and all of that this is usually where people are discouraged to give and all of that but i believe that people always give and will give when it is number one non-manipulative non-manipulative Giving from the standpoint of manipulation, I tell you, it's a waste of time because there is no reward for you. Praise the Lord. Giving under threat to give, otherwise this, it's, it's not, it's not, manip it's a manipulative kind of giving. There's no blessing. The Bible says, if there be first a willing heart, a willing mind. Are we together? So it is important by God's grace, where people of integrity, uh, even as a ministry, all of the blessings of God you see 
upon my life and upon our lives have come as products of a thorough understanding of the systems, the financial systems of the kingdom, alongside the grace to appropriate the keys that should be to make for the blessings of the Lord upon our lives. You can prosper with the dignity of kingdom integrity and, um, and with honor. And this is what you see. If there is anything at all that looks like the blessing of God upon our lives, it is credited to the intelligence of the ways of God that makes for that possibility. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So please, um, we are challenging and calling on everyone, businesses, individuals, our friends, partners, sons, daughters, ministries, um, all around the world who follow us sincerely as the Lord grants you grace, um, do well to support, do well to give. Please understand that what you are doing is not a donation. What you are doing is a connection with understanding. Um, you donate to a social welfare platform. This is a spiritual platform that brings real results when the principles are engaged with understanding. Are we together? Praise the Lord. Let's pray in advance for this end of year sacrifice. Lord, we thank you. It's an honor and a privilege to give. It's an honor and a privilege to sow. And we stand in agreement with the millions around the world who have been blessed, lifted, touched, transformed, saved, healed in and through this ministry. And Lord, we thank you for the opportunity you are providing for us to be part of Kingdom Advance. We are grateful for the participation of the saints. And Lord, we pray that you who is the supervisor of your laws, may you bless and reach everyone according to their needs in the name of Jesus. Every seed that is sown in honor to this, um, this announcement, I pray that it will return to the givers a thousandfold in the name of Jesus. May the Lord bless everyone who is a faithful giver. May the Lord bless everyone who is a participant and a partner with what God is doing. And may we all go from glory to glory. In Jesus' name I pray. Are you ready for the word? Just a brief admonishment. Acts chapter 2. Well, thank you Jesus. Acts chapter 2. we we'll start from verse 36. The Lord put this in my heart and tonight's teaching will really, really bless you. It's an admonishment, but it will bless us. Acts chapter 2 from verse 36. This, this, is, this is Apostle Peter um, at the upper room. Now, this is the first official salvation message after the Holy Ghost came. Therefore, let all the house of Israel, please follow carefully, know assuredly that God hath made the same Jesus whom ye have crucified, both Lord and Christ. 37. Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Peter is responding now, 38. Then Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. 39 is where my message is coming from. For the promise, let's read together. For the promise is unto you and to your children. And to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. One more time. Uh huh. Even as the Lord. This is a very interesting scripture because this is the first salvation message. And Peter is letting the body of believers then and prophetically everyone know that the promises of god this included is not for certain individuals he says the promise is unto you number two unto your children number three 
unto all those who are far off was talking about the gentile nation now then he says as many as our lord shall call very powerful very very powerful revelation the promise is for all not for few the promise not for men of god the promise not for americans not for british people not for africans this is a powerful revelation because until we understand that in christ there is a central platform that allows all and sundry access to the possibilities of the kingdom are we together now the proposition that makes it look as though there are individuals who have been isolated from the experience of the kingdom is a very dangerous communication the promise please keep that scripture for us is first for you everybody says for me then for your children and then to all that are far off even as many as the lord will call second scripture acts chapter 10 please we'll start from verse 34 to 35 i'm establishing first and foremost the centrality and the neutrality of god's operation when it has to do with the saints that there is an equal platform for the saints to be able to partake of the reality of the life and the power of the christ regardless of background regardless of sentiments that when we come to christ there is a level playing ground that allows any believer who is interested to be the partaker of the reality of the experience of the kingdom acts chapter 10 we we'll start from verse 34 now peter this was after the holy ghost fell upon the gentile nation are we still together say amen, amen. then peter opened his mouth and said of a truth i perceive that god is what no respecter of persons in other words there is no favoritism as it were with him next verse but in every nation africa hear this in every nation including africa in every nation including nigeria he that feareth him and walketh righteousness is accepted with him that means that every possibility in the kingdom is for the taking of all please understand this that in the economy of god there is no default preferences that attempts to victimize any individual not on spiritual grounds not on grounds of career not on grounds of maybe wealth and all of that there is no such thing with god the reality of the christ life puts a neutral ground for anyone to be able to become everything destined by god this is a revelation as we end the year it's 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 a reminder for some and it's a revelation for others two more scriptures romans chapter 10 and verse 12 romans chapter 10 and verse 12 the bible says apostle paul now is teaching for there is no difference between the jew and the greek for the same lord everyone please read with me the same lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him the same lord rich unto an american like he is unto an african reach on to the south as he is on to the north as he is on to the east are we together now i'm establishing the fact that everyone's destiny please listen to me in christ everyone's destiny in christ depends on their knowing god and they are activating the truths of the kingdom there is nobody who excels by default there is nobody who succeeds by default when it has to do with dealings the dealings of men with god there is a level praying ground for everyone the last scripture hebrews chapter 4 and verse 16 you know we come from all kinds of families and some of us have been indoctrinated by our sociological contexts into believing that we are disadvantaged listen to me very carefully 
you may never understand how destructive that understanding is that you sustain a thinking that there are people who never believe god can speak to them directly there are people who never believe that they can know god on their own there are people who never believe that they can experience the power of god and the grace of god there are people who never believe they can prosper in this life no we have all kinds of subliminal communications that have come from our backgrounds that continue to plant dangerous perspectives I've done a lot of teachings on mindsets and strongholds, and this is one of such teaching. He said, let us therefore come boldly. Everybody say boldly. boldly. Unto the throne of grace. Let us, not let some, everyone, come boldly to the throne of grace that we, as a corporate body, may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. The throne of grace is accessible by everyone and anyone in Christ. In fact, including sinners. So the Bible says, let us all come to that throne of grace. Are you getting what I'm saying now? These four scriptures show us the centrality and the neutrality of God's dealings with men. In God's economy, there are no superiors to others by default. Follow me closely. There are no favorites as it were. The same Lord is rich unto all. The Bible talks in the book of Jude, I think, of what he called the common salvation. Common salvation. There's no special blood that speaks for Joshua Selman or speaks for the, the, uh, what the, the president of any nation. No, it is the same blood that was shed for everyone. Are we together now? Yes. There is no individual who can rise to the fullness of the potentials in Christ when you believe that there is a sense of inferiority in fact this is Kenyon's definition of righteousness he defines it as the ability to stand in the father's presence without a sense of guilt inferiority and then condemnation the key word there is inferiority that when i stand before god and you stand before god based on that which has been provided for by the christ we stand from the same platform please believe this now it is true that culturally speaking if you are born by a millionaire you are not necessarily the same sociologically speaking with someone who was born somewhere in the village are we together there is an economic advantage if you are born in a nation where the government for instance is more strategic in nation building you already have an environment there are nations today when you are born in you will only need a few visas for the rest of your life because of the advantage of that territory there are others when you are born in even your neighboring country you will need your passport stamps to just cross over because of the socio-economic disadvantage that comes with those territories are we together in Christ the same Lord is rich unto all so when I stand and I see God doing mighty things with Benny Hinn, when I stand and I see God doing mighty things with the millionaires and billionaires when I stand and I see God doing great things with men of God I am inspired but not inspired to the point where you will now rate yourself as second class are you understanding what I'm saying listen to me on every champion and every world changer has found a way of indoctrinating themselves not arrogantly so but truthfully so into an understanding that i stand in a platform through christ that opens me up to any advantage possible on earth do you know what it means to be a child of god being a child of god is the most superior most superior honor that any man can get on earth the second honor you can get on earth is to be the son of a monarch or to be a monarch the third will be to be an ambassador or a politician at the highest level there, there are cadres of honor the highest of them is to be called a child of god behold what manner of love 
the father had bestowed upon us in that we are called us you know we just say it carelessly i'm a child of god donald trump's son needs only few assignments in his life are we together now because a major part of it has been solved look at this our lovely children that we just dedicated the truth is that there are some struggles they will not have in their life again till jesus comes remember we are the bridge between the old and the new we have been that sacrifice that have you know labored for people i'm a child of god it's a powerful revelation the monarch of the universe is my father let that revelation touch you when you say god is my father many people are used to abusing the name god for some people god is a bottle of minerals for some people god is an idol with a stone so when you say god is my father it doesn't carry the weight i'm no longer slave to fear i am a child I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child. So you may come from a background that has no advantage. It is true that your earthly father may not be able to help you. It is true that your heavenly, your earthly mother, or whatever it is, the disadvantage, but the consciousness that the monarch of the universe has decided to become my father and i am his child is a revelation that you must have it instantly gives you a sense of superiority not from a negative standpoint are you getting what i'm saying now yes but you move around knowing that the earth is your estate when I travel to any region, I expect the same thing to happen, regardless of location, because I am still within the domain of my father. Now, when you travel to other parts of the world, you will do left-hand driving, others right-hand driving. When you pass through other places in the world, because of the system of government, sociologically speaking, you are mandated to do certain things. But the awareness that the earth is the Lord's, that means in reality there is no disadvantage because wherever you are located and situated within this territory it is the domain of this monarch called god are we together now very powerful so the bible says that we come boldly this is the first thing i want to establish the promises of god not just the promise of the holy spirit the promises of god that are written in scripture the promises to prosper, the promises to heal, the promises to lift, the promises to bless. Listen, the promise of influence, like God spoke to us, Genesis 17 and verse 6. I will make you exceeding fruitful, he said, and that kings will come out of your loins. Nations will come out of you. It's not necessarily, it's, it was to Abraham, but Galatians 3.29 says, If ye be Christ's, then are ye Abraham's seed, and heirs are according to the promise everybody is a spiritual jew in christ and that reality has brought us to a point where there is no disadvantage i pray that god will help you understand what i've said it is not our background no it is not our sociological context it is an understanding of the neutrality the centrality so understand this tonight even as we prepare to live and travel to different regions there is nobody called by god to a life of failure bishop oedeko said every calling in christ is a high calling everybody say a high calling yes there are no low callings in christ nobody is called to a life of failure mediocrity defeat no we are called to a life of excellence we are called to a life of grace we are called to a life of influence we are called to a life where the bible says that through the church the manifold many-sided wisdom of god will be displayed to principalities and powers if you're with me please say amen 
Now, but strangely so, and I want to pay attention now, the Bible seemed to be very open about individuals that God decided to carve out a name for. And I want to show you the secrets so that we can tap into this grace and into this possibility. The first is in Genesis chapter 18 from verse 17 to 19. God seems to talk to Abraham in a strange way. And the Bible records that Abraham was called the friend of God. Not many people in life are ever called the friend of God. We're reading from verse 17 down to 19. This will bless you. Look at me. He says, and the Lord said, look up please. Shall I hide from Abraham that thing which I do? 18. Seeing that Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation and that and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him is a question 19 for i know him mm. that he will command his children and his household after him and they shall keep the way of the lord to do justice and judgment that the lord may bring upon abraham that which he had spoken of him abraham the friend of god it is true that there is a central ground in dealing with God, but it seems as though certain individuals were able to route certain pathways with God that now began to create a bias in God's dealings with them to make God himself now start giving them names. The name son of God, child of God is a generic name for everybody. It defines the centrality of God's love. But that certain individuals went a step further with God and they started earning for themselves titles that represented special attentions, titles that represented certain covenants. So from that neutral standpoint, you can start growing yourself into specific possibilities with God. Are you getting what I'm teaching tonight? So for Abraham, he became the friend of God. And John chapter 15, please. 15 and 16. Very powerful scripture. John 15. He said, you have not chosen me. Look up. But I have chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit he's talking about fruitfulness and that your fruit should remain and whatsoever ye shall ask of the father in my name he may give it to you next verse he says these things no no go to verse 16 oh dear did i miss something yes 15 let's start from 15 15 and then 16 and 17 henceforth that's what i'm looking for i call you not servants now it's not an insult to be called a servant of god a servant of god is not a slave a servant of god is one who has submitted himself to serve the purposes of god i know sometimes we say servant i'm not a servant if you mean that contrasting sonship you are right but you will understand as you grow with god that the hallmark of sonship is servanthood are we together so to be called a servant of god is not an insult we are bond servants paul uses the word bond slaves but not unto servitude in a negative way henceforth i call you not servants okay for the servant now look at this this is oh dear oh dear may god open our eyes to see in the name of jesus notice the proof of servant is ignorance of certain information knowledge he says, for a servant knoweth not what the Lord doeth. He says, but I have called you friends. What is the advantage of friendship? For all things that I have heard of my father, I have made known to you. The advantage of friendship with God is the privilege of access to spiritual knowledge. You know you are a friend of God to the degree to which he bends over backwards to open you up to the mysteries of the kingdom, the truths of the kingdom. The Bible calls them the secret things of God. This one is not for everybody. Is God helping us tonight? Abraham, my friend, shall I hide this from him? shall i hide this from him a servant does not know he may obey religiously without knowing 
but a friend is privy to information god is about to do certain things and he said no abraham is my friend this is powerful so god calls abraham his friend so i can know that i am growing just from sonship into friendship by god by the depth to which his fortitude to share the secrets of the kingdom and you know that dominion in this kingdom is a function of the secrets of the kingdom that we access it's called the hidden wisdom of god by me kings reign and princes decree justice with me are riches wealth and honor yea durable riches and righteousness they that love me and seek me early will find me Acts chapter 13 we're still building on this Acts chapter 13 from verse 21 to 23 another man carves out a title for himself although at a level plain ground we are all children of god or we are all creations of god we now see another man who went out of his way and afterwards peter is speaking now they desired a king and god gave unto them saul the son of kish a man of the tribe of benjamin by the space of 40 years next verse and when he had removed him he raised up unto them read with me david to be their king uh-huh to whom also he gave testimony stop who testified god god is about to give a testimony that i have found david the son of jesse help me a man after my own heart what qualifies him to be a man after my own heart his insistence to see that my will is always fulfilled now notice how these people end their titles most times we just know their titles but i'm showing you what they did how they went far when it has to do with the friend of god he's saying you have done something to me that forbids me from hiding things from you i give you access to knowledge as proof of friendship when it now has to do with a man after his heart he's saying i have discerned that this man will die doing my will and i have given him i've given him a title of a man after my own heart god is testifying not a prophet a man who pursues my heart not who pursues the throne don't forget the man is a king and yet god does not talk about his throne he will abandon his throne to seek the heart of god and god says this man is a man after my heart why because of his insistence to see that my will is being done next verse of this man's seed hath god of this man's seed that god according to his promise raised up unto israel a savior jesus this is his reward for being a man after god's heart god insisted that your seed must participate in the lineage that will bring david was not the only man after the order of you know god and all of that but he is he is called the seed of david thou son of david not thou son of rahab not thou son of boaz not thou son of naomi they all played their roles but out of those people god selected one man to become to personify his passion towards a man are you learning something tonight a man after my heart a friend of god this is a very powerful revelation now let me share with you something very very powerful um and, and and this is where i think and i believe that many believers are not properly mentored and as we go on break it's important to remind and re-emphasize this that in the dealings of god man will always have a role to play in actualizing prophecy please listen carefully that the systems of god work twofold one the dimensions that are finished from god's standpoint and then number two through the experience of alignment and obedience we make manifest that which has been finished in our lives philippians chapter 2 and verse 12 
Philippians chapter 2 and verse 12. It says, Wherefore, Paul is admonishing the church in Philippi, Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence. Hear what he says. Walk out your own, not your neighbor, not your child, not your wife, not your husband. Walk out your own salvation and give it a level of diligence with fear and trembling. Walk out your own prosperity. Walk out your own intimacy with the Holy Spirit. Walk out your own, ensure that you press into God so much that he's forced to find a name for you. He calls Abraham a friend of God. He calls Jacob the one, he names it after a generation of intimacy. And he's saying, listen, you have a responsibility to press until, until you give him no rest, the Bible says, until he establishes Jerusalem. There is a way you can wear God out, if I can use that word, through your passion and your intimacy intimacy he will brand his relationship with you and give it a name that defines his unique attention towards you work out your own salvation you will read about prosperity and never enter into it you may read about divine health and never enter into it now listen because this is a serious problem with africa the awareness of things like the finished work of christ which is true has when not properly balanced has provided a platform for a lot of irresponsibilities in believers and the ability to sustain the fortitude to press as an act of faith it's not there so we have people who just sit down and want everybody pray for me be wealthy for me be prosperous for me and that fortitude that participatory effort is not there are we together now so many people want to know the Holy Spirit and they think the key to knowing the Holy Spirit is to receive an impartation from a man who knows the Holy Spirit. What you are going to receive from that impartation is a ladder, a ladder that you will climb. Hello? A ladder that you what? Climb. You will climb it through your prayer. You will climb it through your relationship. You will climb it through the sacrifice of the instructions God will give you. That is not for everybody, it's for only you. You are about to eat and God says, turn the plate upside down. You are fasting for one week. He said, God, is it for everybody? He said, no, it's for only you. He said, God, why me? I mean, scripture. He says, I thought you want a name. A name that defines the extent of my intimacy with you. This is the pathway that leads to such a possibility. Now, there are rewards when you contend that much. Because you will, I mean, in physically now, we have what we call regular treatment of guests, whether in hotels, airports, whatever. We have what is called priority treatment. Now, the Nigerian government does not allow favoritism. But the various sacrifices of people have forced to have a lounge, a business lounge, a general place where people sit down. All those things are not favoritism. They are a way of rewarding the contribution of those people to nation building. So in as much as there is a level playing ground, there is something you and God can do that makes it unfair fair for God to generalize his dealings with you that from that time is a covenant you create that makes it impossible for God to deal with you the way he deals with everyone this is true it's a very powerful mystery that I show you work out your own salvation Thou shalt remember the Lord thy God. It is he that gives you the power to get well. A lot of believers start jumping. In the name of Jesus, I will never be poor. You are getting poor. You are seeing it. God is, your poverty is a report card. God is telling you you are missing something. I will never be poor. I'm not being sarcastic. And you find out that a lot of people, and then here and there, we just browse through the laws. Okay, what and what should I know? Okay, tithing, giving, I should do business, I should do this. And then you just do one or two things and find out that nothing changes. And at a point, you just say, Kai, this Nigeria yourself man must work and you know all of this we find obvious excuses and then things never change but there are people who will will you will see them burn the candle in the days of my youth 
when the secrets of the Lord was upon my tabernacle when his light shined upon my head there is a light that shines upon your head there is the one that shines upon your feet the one that shines upon your head gives you illumination it says there is a spirit in man if you only have the light that shines on your feet you will keep walking but let me tell you the truth you will need the one that grants you access to knowledge are, are you getting what I'm teaching you now yes hmm. work out your own salvation any ministry that grows is worked at you know a lot of people sometimes respectfully people see me and say wow apostle God is doing mighty things in your life and I say yes he is and I, I really thank him and they, ah you are anointed though and you know sometimes I'm tempted to say I, I hear you are carrying the anointing of the generals and I'm tempted to say are they my relatives how did that happen you see this, this is the question we need to ask our god has favored you god has favored koinonia my brothers and my sisters behind everything that works is somebody working it working it with diligence working it with passion working it with zest behind every business that works it is favor every house is built by some man but god is still the builder it's a mystery this issue of being a worker this language work believers don't like it the men the moment you mention work people don't have why must i work oh dear Genesis chapter 2 after God creates man and woman he now comes to take clay God the creator who speaks and creates used his hand not his mouth alone when you read chapter 1 alone you are deceived because that's where he spoke and created it in the realm of the spirit you must go to chapter 2 and see God the walker not just God the speaker it takes more than speaking to build a destiny your hands must be soiled you will put your hands down and make it happen there are people around just looking for impartation looking for cheap prophecy and there is a place for those things but it is only activated whilst you walk whilst you walk hallelujah many people are going to remain poor it's not it's not a negative prophecy and my heart pains me while i say this many people are going to remain mediocre in their life many people may never sustain the level of influence and grace that it takes to birth the purposes of god generationally and it is not necessarily because god decided to use others it is your individual commitment elisha was never supposed to be a prophet elisha was a farmer but he followed Elijah and said I don't care what you are going to do with me oh I must carry so they were already sons of the prophet the next prophet should come out of them but someone said I need I, I, I can't die farming I started farming but I will follow you until something comes upon my life we define our realities by the unashamedness to pursue the keys of the kingdom until something comes from heaven to your life i will never be the same i've touched your grace my life will change i will never be the same i've touched your grace my life will change i will never be the same i've touched your grace my life I, I, finances with fear and trembling man of God sit down work out your ministry work out your sermons don't just wait for an impartation that will teach you verses open your Bible mark them write them down when others are sleeping wake up there is the labor dimension of greatness no impartation will replace it 
You don't sit down and casually fast yourself the way you like into uncommon anointings. You are joking. You pray once in a while when you want one hour per year, two hours per year. No. Buy the books. Read your way to excellence. Use your diligence to create a space for yourself in destiny. My life will change. Eh? My life must change. My life will change. Eh? My life will change. I will never be the same. I've touched his grace. My life must change. I will never. chapter 2 we we'll read from verse 4 down to 10 the verse of emphasis is verse 10 please listen my brothers and my sisters this is a message to the body of Christ we must be careful we are missing a very major key the dimension of spiritual diligence it cannot be bought there are certain wells you must dig by yourself Africa likes prophecy. We like impartation. We like to receive. But there are wells that must be dug. There are, there are fountains that must be broken. It's a sacrifice. The price is death. Are we together? Go to verse 8. Go to verse 8. Second Peter 1 For if these things be in you, look at this now, and abound, they make that you shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. 9 But he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off and hath forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. 10 Wherefore the rather, he says, Brethren, give diligence to make your calling and your election sure. It is true you are called, but prove it. It is true you are called, but give the level of diligence that makes your calling and your election sure. It is true you are a prophet, but prove it. It is true you are an apostle, but prove it. It is true that God has raised you to be a voice, but obtain grace to prove it. Give diligence. Diligence. Diligence in prayer. Diligence in the study of the word. Diligence in the sacrifice of compliance. Listen, let me tell you. Real success is not at a platter of gold at any level. Whether it is spiritual success, whether it is financial success, whether it is grace and influence. It is a sacrifice of continual press. As your insistence is what makes life open the gate for you. Is God speaking to us? This is where men are separated from boys. This is where what provides the disparity in ministry. This is what provides the disparity in business. This is what provides the disparity in the advantages that we command in our lives. I've had the privilege and the opportunity to talk with a few very great people and I am amazed at the silent sacrifices of these things these people when you see a wealthy man all you see is the affluence and you see the money until you find out the sacrifices that go on when you see a man of god you may just see the miracles and the signs and the wonders until you see the sacrifices that go on when you see a great person even politicians it's amazing that those people don't sleep two o'clock three a.m they are organizing meetings 
There are men of God who organize vigils. They sleep by five, six, and by eight, they are awake to attend to programs. Whoever told you that this thing just comes easy is a sacrifice. It says to be diligent. Someone will have to obtain that grace today. Wishing and hoping and believing that just laying on of hands and all of that, people are lucky. No. There are many platforms of advantage like prophetic connections, like all of these kinds of things, but none of them will replace the track record of sustained diligence. Hallelujah. Diligence. This is what I've learned in my life. As I have studied different people in ministry and then other platforms of life, I have tried to look for what is the 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 impediment what is the one factor that seems to cancel out every effort because people do things but i found out that most people are not diligent most people are hopeful most people are prayerful most people are very futuristic but the ability to stamp your feet and say i will walk this thing in the name of jesus until it works ministry must work doors must open by the price of diligence the labor dimension jesus said my father walked hitherto i walk my father walks and i walk to the point that even seated at the right hand of the father he's still engaged making intercession for the saints many african nations respectfully speaking we have missed on the price of diligence spiritual diligence socioeconomic diligence the diligence of mentorship the diligence of the sacrifice of breaking these grounds until the fountains open can i be honest with you and submit to you next year will come and go year after next will come and go another year will come and go a decade will come and go your lifetime will come and go until you draw yourself and say look i am ready to walk this thing thank god for prophetic words they are not a lie but they only work for those who walk prophetic word does not work for those who hear it works for those who walk diligent Is God speaking to us tonight? Now, let me share with you one key to add to your diligence or so, and then we'll just rush to pray. I have found out. Now, I don't claim to have known God for too long, but I have enjoyed a little bit of his presence. And let me tell you something I found out with God. The single look up the single most important factor that governs the dealing of god with a man is the state of your heart the purity and the truthfulness of the state of your heart is the master key to walking with god write it down There are many systems that continue to build men in the kingdom. But listen to me, my brothers and my sisters. There is nothing of God and of worth that will ever happen to a man, a people, a nation whose hearts are not pure towards God and whose hearts are not true towards God. The motivation and the motif of your heart vetoes your prayer life vetoes your fasting vetoes your obedience no matter what you do with god you are not ready to start with god until he is able to x-ray your heart the purity and the sincerity of your heart is the foundational platform of doing business with god you have to understand this there are many believers that ignore this and we do a lot of other things we do business we fast we pray we do ministry but i have discovered in my work with god and from scripture that god is obsessed with knowing the truthfulness of the state of the heart of a man and i've preached many messages along this line please get them and listen to them see the great in this kingdom are not necessarily the most diligent 
the great in this kingdom are not necessarily as it were the closest people with God but there is something I know about God the purity of a man's heart is a force that magnetizes all of God to you the state of your heart why do you want to prosper why do you want anointing why do you want to be a president why do you want to be a governor why do you want to be a man of god why do you want to be a business mogul do you know for many believers this is where the real corruption lies that the motive and the motivation intrinsically is not right I know several men of God who will do anything within scripture to get power. They have the stamina to fast for as long. They have the stamina to pray. But the truth is that intrinsically, God has not found a space for himself in their motif. If there is one secret about my life, I tell you this, and I say it before God and I say it before you. If there is one secret, it is that if I prefer that I go to be with the Lord, if God cannot find a space for himself in my heart and in my motive. It's not just about anointing. Listen, it's not just about prosperity and influence. You know, many times when I travel and people are receiving me and the honor, the whole paraphernalia of honor and everything, and I see people admiring, and I just nod my head. I say, oh dear, oh dear. May God have mercy and grant us grace to reorient our understanding. Because this is some of these flamboyant things when we see we are, we are caught up and we go and say, no, me too. I must be rich. I must be blessed. And we start fasting already your motif has cancelled everything and I if I be lifted up from the earth I will draw all men I will draw all men I want to marry why I want children why I want increase in ministry why listen it is not a difficult thing for God to step in and help men it is within God's power to lift men riches and honor come from him the influence and the power and the grace comes from him the problem is the state of our hearts the greatest prayer therefore is not even intercession for souls the greatest prayer is not binding witches and wizards the greatest prayer is not deliverance from enemies the greatest prayer is the prayer that turns your heart into a throne the throne where he can be seated the prayer that can turn your heart into a throne is a prayer god cannot ignore please koinonia listen to me these are my final words to us as we prepare to wrap up the year there are people who God loves them as savior to all but doing the business of destiny it has not started until that death happens so sometimes when people come and say apostle I want an impartation I want grace with all it's a privilege to be able to do the things that we do for the kingdom but I know that I'm wasting my time I've read books on wealth and prosperity. I've read books on church growth. I've read books on influence, territorial dominion. At a point in time, I had to appreciate the books, but I closed them. I said, Lord, there must be a secret. And that's when he told me that the price for all of me is all of you. The price for all of me is not all of your brain. The price for all of me is not all of your singing. The price for all of me is not all of your worship. The price for all of me is all of you. Is God speaking to us? All of you. All of you. All of you. Now, let me tell you this. It is not unusual for a generation to not believe you. So don't think it is strange. My loved ones don't believe me. You are not the first. It is all right. A generation does not believe me. Nothing is believable till the results speak. Please understand this. But that price of death continues to be. And you see, the thing with death is you don't die once. It's Jesus that died once. The saints die every day. Hello? Jesus died once and for all because of the character of what he was doing. The atonement. You are not dying to atone. You are dying to yield. You are dying to align. The death is part 24 hours. 
the moment today is gone you start the death of tomorrow the moment tomorrow is gone you start the death for every dimension of death there is a corresponding glory the day you are tired god will not force you but he will show you that don't then ask for this dimension of glory when you are not willing to continue yeshua hamashiach komi nanakane yeshua hamashiach komi nanakane komi nanakane ya yesu Yeshua Hamashiach One more time find a dead vessel and you see the possibilities that can come out show me a man who has vowed to continue to die i show you a glory that excels show me a people that continue to die our generation does not like the language of death because every time we talk of death it spells inconvenience it spells discomfort it spells going out of it means that sometimes god will strip you of everything you it's a price for the glory no matter how much impartation is a price for the glory you are not just going to lay hands on the sick and say in Jesus name stand up I'm a member of koinonia you are right but let me tell you when it comes to the depth of the dealings of God generationally you will need to die generationally are you hearing what I'm saying now please listen very carefully there are people that God will give you instructions empty your account there are people God will tell you 80% of all your wealth for the next two years keep giving it you say Lord why he said because you said you want to be a kingdom financier because I said I thought I should have he says I want to give you a revelation of there is he that scattereth and yet increase it you are you know it as a memory verse but I'm leading you through a pathway that makes it an experience for you lord i want you to anoint me grant me the grace that speaks across territories and he says you really want that yes god let's go and you start the journey and for starters he says give everything you have in your life he said god i didn't hear you well give everything you have your reputation your wealth your everything your clothes your honor give it away that is the price is what he told the rich man he said go and sell everything you have follow me the man said no 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 jesus this one is so much authentic spiritual power does not just come by impartation alone it comes by death it comes by death lord i'm trusting god for the grace for illumination revelation but your mind is full of many things you must die to give it space and when there is space then the oil can come and the seeing eye can be given to you please listen to what i'm telling you remember my message the same Lord is rich unto all, but by certain sacrifices, men have ascended this ladder and they have given, they have branded their dealings with God so that he has been forced through their sacrifices to no longer deal with them as he deals with men. This is the hand of God and this is the way he works. Scattered across the body of Christ, are different individuals different territories who have ascended different dimensions of ladders in the spirit and god has defined certain possibilities to them there are churches and ministries when you enter there you must prosper even before you finish learning all the laws at least you will prosper to a point where you will be surprised you will know that i have no part in this because you are now a partaker of a covenant god has vowed a vow by the sacrifices of certain people please listen to me brothers and sisters when you walk with God at a general level 
you will go to heaven but you will not do much these are not even the people satan is looking for satan will come and pass you you will call him he will still leave you he's looking for people there are people he's looking for desperately where are these ones that want to die where are these ones whose life is no longer their own where are these people who want to experience the anointing in another dimension where are these ones who want the power and the grace of god where are these ones who want the influence of nations there is nothing that can be done about a man who has chosen to die the last enemy to be destroyed is death and when a man has chosen to die it's over Boko Haram are a threat because of their willingness to die not to leave when you want to leave you are in trouble you are only free when you are ready to die I have been crucified with Christ nevertheless I live is a mystery and the life that I live in the flesh I live by the faith of the Son of God that whatever it will cost me to die I will die not for the sake of ministry not for the sake of money not for the sake of titles that prayer to search my heart Try my thoughts. It's a powerful prayer. It's a prayer you must pray for the rest of your life in this side of God's kingdom. The heart that cries for all of God, not more of God. All of God, not more of God. All of God. He will, he will come more and more. But the goal is for all of him to be transfused into you. The secret to ministry is not invitations. The secret to ministry is not a crowd. It's not a church. It's not eloquence and oratory. The secret to ministry is not even the loyalty of men to serve you. The secret is death. Genuine, continual death. I died yesterday. You are joking. You die daily. I died last week. No, sir. You die daily. You are dying today. You will die next week. A time will come when you truly will not have any life on your own. These are the ones that step their feet upon the soil of nations. And like the waters, it will pass hither and thither. And you are wondering, are these men gods? They are men. But death translated them into another dimension. Please hear me, my brothers and my sisters, more than Bible study, more than mentorship, more than fasting, more than prayer, more than training your skills, the real secret is to die. After 30 years as Christ tarries, I will still be preaching this thing I'm saying. If you don't die, you cannot live. The way to live is to die. To die to yourself. To die to your ego. To die to your desires. It's a journey. A journey that until the day you see his face, you don't stop. I die daily. 
it is the price for carrying the anointing it is the price for carrying grace you can die to a point where it does not make any difference whether God keeps his wealth in heaven or he keeps it in your account you have so died is the same thing whether the money is in your account or is in heaven in God's mind is the same because any day he makes a demand it will go a time will come where whether the anointing is in heaven or the anointing is on your life is the same because God has guaranteed that you will die seeing to it that his purposes be established this that I share with you is the price when this is settled then that's when every other thing makes sense your prayer life your fasting even your obedience to scripture believe me when i tell you all that is nonsense when you have not died is the reason why we will keep fasting we will keep praying we will keep quoting scripture you see someone's car you go and lie down on it and say oh god please open my door and you are right it should bless you but it will not bless you because you are speaking from a platform of a decadence of heart yes you are. listen we give we give breaks in the ministry not just to allow us rest it's been a busy year for everyone but the goal is not just to rest and catch up we're giving you one month so that it will help you die well die enough to carry the glory of 2020 die enough to carry the power of 2020 die enough to carry the voice and the mantle of 2020 that lord i am dead but not dead enough to carry the next glory dead but not dead enough to carry the mantle the power dead but not dead enough to be trusted with kingdom influence at that point the one week now you are not going to go to god as a worker you are not going to god as apostle joshua selman you are not going to god as a leader you are going to God as one who is desirous of his use. And now you can have the time to lock yourself. You can have the time to stay with God and stay till you die. While your flesh cries, you say, God, don't pity it. Forget about the tears of my flesh. Keep the death going. Just keep the death going. The death, your ego, say, forget about my ego. Keep the death going. Ah, my money, forget about the money. Keep the dead going. House Kalata. Show me that man, and I show you a man to fear in this life. A man that has mastered death. I die daily, Paul said. So he got to a point where he could say, For me, oh, I don't know whether it is to go or to stay. I have conquered the interface of these limitations. But for your sake, I will stay. Let me tell you my brothers and sisters you've heard me say it again there are virgin dimensions in the spirit compared to where god is taking us we are only starting and we must trust god for grace to not be complacent the secret is to turn to god and sit down and die the applauds of men can deceive men can clap you and stop you from entering tomorrow this one thing I do, the Bible says, forgetting the things that are behind. You must train yourself to forget. Both success and failure can do the same thing. It can kill you. So you lay it aside and say, Lord, what is the price for the next level? And he says, death. And he say, come. Like a doctor about to perform a surgery on a patient, let it go. Let the ministration of that death continue. And you are staying with God. It will tell you for the next three days let no food enter your mouth there is a surgery spiritually and even the slightest meal can interrupt it and he said lord ordinarily i will want to eat but for the joy that is before me let me endure the cross and even despise the shame and in the midst of that pain suddenly you will meet an anointing you will meet a grace and god will tell you this anointing is what i'm releasing on earth for the next 15 years that means whoever does not have this type of anointing cannot be featured in my program and now that you have died enough here you go pick it up and you pick it and like like the pages of a book another dimension of you is open and whilst you think you have exhausted you will see another dimension they go from strength to strength this is my message 
not just to go and celebrate Christmas and up and down not just to go gisting and wasting our time listen times with God are times of death now is not the time to go and be clapping for yourself in the secret place it's foolishness great men are great because they forget their crowns great men are great because they forget their trophies great men are great because they forget their achievements create an immunity in your room that does not hear let you hear the the clappings of men while they are clapping you are dying the clap increases you are still dying and the flesh tells you have you not attained enough and the Spirit of God says you lie not for the mantle of a nation keep dying keep dying you will see the effulgence of the power of God in your life and men will look at you and say are you a human being or you are a spirit when you go back God will say can we continue you are back from the meeting you some of you will go home and God will give you instructions organize crusades organize little meetings and while you are doing all of those people will look at you and say at ah, this koinonia and while they are talking you want to come back to life and the spirit to say no not at this point keep dying the door to life is death the door to the throne is the cross the door to the cross then the grave you must die it is the one key I have learned in my life fear a man who dies don't fear a man who died now I beseech ye brethren by the mercies of God that ye offer your bodies a living sacrifice unto God which is your reasonable act of worship there are times that God does not want songs no there are times that God does not want prayer there are times God does not even want dancing around there are times God does not want reading any Bible there are times God just wants the sacrifice of death it will rise as an incense past the second heavens where demons are demons don't need your death they cannot do anything with your death it will pass them they can't cast it they can't kill it it passes straight to the throne and is received before the master and through that death the blood that comes from your death becomes your agreement the signature you sign with God for the next five years Lord I am still available Lord don't replace me with a stone Lord I am still there you have options but incorporate me in your program are you ready to pray number one Lord make me blind to anything that can make me alive in myself whether it's pride whether it is money whether it is the flesh deaden my eyes deaden my ears deaden my senses to the impulses that can distract my process of death lift your voice and pray Lift your voice and pray. Pray for yourself. Pray for yourself. Not Nigeria. Not your family. Not ministry. Pray for yourself. Not your neighbor. Not your brother. Not your sister. Pray for yourself. Shalabarata kateleba, embrakete baruto soto baladabash, rakete baruto subariata. Lord, let me die the death that brings glory. Let me die the death that brings power. Deaden my eyes. Deaden. 
deaden my ears to the impulses of distractions, deaden my eyes, deaden my ears to the uploads of men, deaden my eyes, deaden my ears to the flattery of men, the deception of success. Bring me to a point where I am focused in death, dying daily, dying hourly. I give you a key one more time for those who did not hold it this year you should hold it before you go home that everything only makes sense when death is in place that everything only makes sense when the flesh dies that everything only makes sense die daily die daily die on monday die on tuesday die on wednesday die on thursday die on friday die on saturday die on tuesday it is not physical death it is death to the flesh stay on the journey obtain grace and stamina the stamina to continue the stamina to press until you press to strange dimensions of anointings strange dimensions of graces die until god swears a vow upon your life die until the character of the spirit is continually formed in you die until you are dead that all of you is replaced by all of him hallelujah hallelujah we are going to pray a very serious prayer oh god purge my motives listen purge my motivation why do i do the things that i do why do i preach why do i want money why do i want a wife why do i want a husband why do i want children why do i want influence why do i want my voice to be heard generationally what is the intrinsic motivation we are about to pray and let the light of god the double-edged sword penetrate dividing the soul and spirit and let it discern the thoughts and the intents of your heart don't be ashamed what you find there don't be embarrassed by it that's what his presence is for that's what the sword is for but lift your voice purge my motive purge my motivation the psalmist said search my heart try my thoughts and see if there's any evil way in me then he says lead me to the way everlasting koinonia pray in this final service Shila baruto sodo bash, eketa baruto soto pradish, randa baranta skabaru shaletos. Why do I want influence? Why do I want prosperity? Why do I want a voice? Why do I want the anointing? Why do I want the prophetic? Why do I want the healing grace? Why do I want access to the heart of a generation? Pray and cry before God. my pride pray break my ego pray break my reputation bring me to a point of nothingness where all that is in my heart is a desire to see you glorified a desire to see your purpose is established 
is someone praying few minutes and we are done but pray the purity the purity of my motivation the purity of my motive the purity of my desire lift your voice and pray this is a process that makes you become a friend of God this is a process that makes you become an icon for a generation and die purify my motives purify my motivation if you find any motivation that is not the revelation of the Christ if you find any motivation that is not the enthroning of your purposes Lord I allow you to kill it pray that prayer let it die and die again and again Listen, hallelujah. We're rounding up, but listen, let me tell you this. Happy is a man. See, you see, Ba, outside of this journey, we are not worth much. We are very small. It is the excellency of this journey that makes you heavy. That's where the word glory comes from. Kabod, doxa, the weightiness of God upon a man. The mighty God upon a man doing wonders. The treasure that comes from heaven to turn a man around so that your life becomes an effulgence. Pages of wonders. Ever increasing wonders. We're going to pray the last point and we're done. Father, the next dimension of my life and my destiny, whatever price it would take to step into it, I obtain grace. The Bible says we should obtain grace. This grace is obtained. It is not assumed. It is obtained. Lift your voice and begin to pray. The next dimension. The next dimension of my prosperity. What is the price, so God? The next dimension of ministry, what is the prize? The next dimension of influence, you are praying now, preparing for 2020. Is someone praying? Thank God for the 2019. Thank God for that which was done. But Lord, I set my face like a fling. Is someone praying tonight? What is the price for the anointing of 2020? What is the price for the influence of 2020? What is the price for the impact of 2020? What is the price for the speed of 2020? What is the price for the relevance of 2020? What will it take to be featured in your program? No assumptions. No assumptions. I obtain grace. I obtain grace. I obtain grace to be featured in your program. Come 2020. I obtain grace to remain relevant in the scheme of things. Come 2020. I remain, I obtain grace to remain your friend. To remain a man after your heart, grace to remain the voice. Please pray for yourself, pray for your family, pray for your church, pray for your ministry, pray for your business. Lord, what will it take to remain? What will it take to increase? What will it take to advance? What will it take?
Hallelujah. Let me give us one more prayer point. The Lord is just ministering one more prayer point. We are going to pray. Holy Spirit. You see, the revelation of the Holy Spirit is a mighty secret. Many people know his power, but they do not know his presence. Many people know how to use the anointing that comes from the Holy Ghost to prophesy, to pray for the sick. But the intimacy, Paul said the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the koinonia, the fellowship, the participation, the sharing together. Please, you have to use this break to know the Holy Spirit. Thank God for ministers who continue to pray. And based on the assignment he has given in life and in death, will continue to be faithful to it. But you must trust God for intimacy. Holy Spirit, who are you? You are not just a wind. Benny Hinn said you are his friend. Catherine Kuhlman said you are her friend. I can't lie that you are my friend. Reveal yourself to me. Not for the sake of ministry. Not for the sake of prophecy. 99% of our pursuit for the Holy Spirit is to get the gifts that come from him so that we will increase our sphere and then use it to be relevant nonsense you must shelve those things and say Holy Spirit show me who you are that Shekinah that presence that intimacy Jesus walked with you you turned him into a sign and a wonder spirit of the living god and for some of us we have to pray and say holy spirit from where i left off let continue the journey because it was not like this from where i left off let's continue the journey pick my hands again turn me into a sign and a wonder but much more than that turn me into a friend we are going to pray holy spirit manifest yourself reveal yourself to me lift your voice and pray Reveal yourself in the quietness of the night. Haven't purged my motif. Haven't purged my motivation. Help me seek you for who you are. Help me know you for who you are. Not for what you can do to my life. Not what you can bring to my table. Let my life never remain the same. We're wrapping up. Aside from those who are under the anointing and those who are kneeling down, if you can hold someone's hand, if there's somebody near you to hold a hand, let's just hold hands as a family of faith, connecting with those all around the world. We will never be the same We've touched your grace Our lives will change We can never be the same Not with your grace Our lives must change Our lives will change Our lives will change Our hearts must change Father, I stand in the presence of your people And everyone who is connected to this grace And connected to this ministry all over this nation all over the continent of Africa and all over the world we stand as a family in this last service and whilst thanking you for everything you have done in 2019 we decree and declare do not withhold administering the death that produces glory in us in the name of Jesus Lord, I pray for everyone under the sound of my voice and the millions connecting from different nations. Spirit of the living God, reveal yourself to us. Beyond religion, 
reveal yourself to us in the name of Jesus father I stand before your people and as a family of faith we cry the price for the relevance of 2020 the price for the revelations of 2020 the price for the signs the wonders the influence the price to end your trust for 2020 through the ministration of death we pray in the name of jesus may that price be fully paid in our lives i pray tonight and forever search our hearts oh god purify our motives and continue to overturn and overturn until everything you find in our hearts is christ christ enthroned christ glorified christ exalted christ revealed in the name of jesus christ father i decree and declare right now over everyone connected to this grace that in the name of jesus let this break be a break that is worth the while let it be full of moments of encounter and intimacy let it be full of moments of plannings and revelations may this break be the bridge between our now and our tomorrow in the name of jesus for all of you who will be traveling in the name of jesus i decree and declare whether by road whether by sea whether by air i speak over you by the god of heaven may your journeys be blessed may your going out and your coming in remain blessed in the name of Jesus, I send you from this place tonight like the foxes of Samson. That you will go in the spirit and the power of Elohim. May you go and wreak havoc to the kingdom of darkness. May you go and bring life, be dispensers of life in your homes. Return back to your localities as signs and wonders. And for as many of you who God will be giving instructions to do many things for the kingdom within the time of the break, the grace to be effective, let it be released. Everybody who will be on retreat, everybody should be. And everybody who will be on retreat, I pray for you, let there be an open heavens. Accurate delivery of the precepts for the next level of your life in the name of Jesus I decree and declare every challenge in your life now and every challenge in your family and every challenge in your locality by the power that raised Christ from the dead I declare that it leaves you now and forever anyone under the sound of my voice that the spirit of death is roaming around your life and around your family i stand by the god of heaven and i curse it now in jesus name i speak life to your destiny i speak life to your family i speak life to your body in the name of jesus christ I declare that nobody connected to this ministry will be a victim of kidnappers in the name of Jesus Christ and I declare by the power of the Holy Spirit may my God keep you from trouble he will only take you to the place of honor in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus finally before we round up let me pray over our finances a lot has happened in the nation and it is only responsible that I speak over our finances especially during the Yuletide season 
There are families that sadly can barely even afford something to eat. It's not enough to be waiting for welfare, for God to use somebody. God can open the heavens. There is an advantage that the prophetic provides, even at times like this. Every time there was famine and financial squalor, it was the prophetic that came to breach. And I want to speak over our finances. It matters that there are resources in our hands, especially within this time. There are some of us, um, every one of our family members will be depending on us while we are depending on God and probably others. So I need to speak into your life. I pray for you in the name of Jesus. <clears throat> Between now and next week, by the God of heaven, let there be a manifestation of strange favor. In the name of Jesus, let very strange resources at a corporate level and as an individual level, may these resources follow you. Every financial need that will arise, the grace to solve it, I release it upon you. In the name of Jesus Christ. And finally, I pray for you that the love of God, the bond of perfectness, I've taught you that the hallmark of transformation is love, not knowledge. I pray for you from the depth of my heart. The love of God that seals your character, the love of God that seals all that you are, I impart it upon you now in the name of Jesus Christ. The Bible says, by this shall all men know that we are your disciples when we have love one for another. May the baptism, a fresh dimension of love, let it come upon you. In the name of Jesus, be extensions of that love to your loved ones. Be extensions of that love to your locality. Whatever it would take for you to show that love, may the grace be released upon you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Now please, everyone, aside from those kneeling, please keep standing. I want to make the last altar call for the year. The last altar call for the year. There are people here. Let's minimize movements, please. There are people inside, outside, overflow. One, two, three. You are saying, Apostle, while I listen to you, I just felt the need to make it right with Jesus and to make it now. Before the year is over wherever you are or you are saying apostle i want to rededicate my life to jesus please wherever you are we have just two minutes for you i want you to leave your seat aside from those in overflow three overflow three you can just move to your projector stand but you are here i want you to run boldly come and stand here very quickly let's celebrate them as they come you're coming from outside please double up very very quickly god bless you koinonia is this the best you can do Keep coming. God bless you. Keep coming. God bless you. Keep coming. If there are still people coming from outside, please double up, double up very quickly. Hallelujah. Now, please look at me for a moment. Those of you in front, I salute you for making this great and bold decision. Um, some of you are crying. Don't be ashamed of your tears. We are before Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. I want to lead you into this prayer, and I want you to mean it from the depth of your heart. Don't recite this as a poem. Let it be true from your heart. Lift your right hand. You're joining them. Please come quickly. Please say after me passionately and say it truly. Say, Lord Jesus, I love you. And I believe that you are the Son of God. Tonight, I ask Jesus to come into my heart, to be my Lord, to be my Savior, to be my King. I declare by the authority of Scripture that I receive eternal life. I receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness and i reign in life the power of sin the power of satan the power of the flesh is broken in my life now and forever
I am a child of God. I reign forever. Amen. Lord Jesus, I thank you for these ones. They have come as touching your grace and your call. The Bible says, and whosoever will come to him, he will in no wise cast away. My God and my King, I pray and I cry that you will bless them. I pray that you will keep them in the name of Jesus. May they know your presence. May they know your power. Holy Spirit, I commend them to your ministry. I pray that you will turn them into signs and turn them into wonders. May the Lord bless you. You move forward ever and backward never. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen and amen. God bless you and thank you again for this decision. Please look at me, all of you. Uh, I want you to just follow these gentlemen waving their hands, all of you in concert. Just follow them and they will lead you to a group of people who will attend to them. Let's celebrate them, everyone. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We believe you are mightily blessed. To connect with the ministry and get more from Apostle Joshua Selman, follow us on Facebook and Twitter at Koinonia ENI. To stream Koinonia Live, go to mixler.com forward slash Koinonia radio. radio. And download the teachings on koinoniasermons.org. For questions and inquiries, call 0814-721-4444 or 0907 